Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, this is take a lot. So um, <laughs> welcome to Manic Pixie Dream Ghouls, the very professional podcast. It doesn't work in my attic. And I was attacked by a beetle. So here I am oh, yeah. on my patio you survived. Um, with this with this TikTok microphone. I feel like I should get a TikTok microphone too so that we can like. I think it's match. kind of it needs to become our thing. <laughs> I think it's adorable <laughs> and I really like it actually. Cheers. It's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. And like it, it makes me feel, I just feel so young. I feel like a teen. Anyways, we're going to knock this bitch out real quick. Yeah, we are. Okay, guys. So in the movie The Ring, Samara can project her thoughts and memories into other people's minds. This is like a psychic ability she has, and allegedly she's evil from the beginning and not just when that woman murders her. Whatever. To be After fair, death, it is a little intrusive to just project your thoughts and feelings to someone else's It is, mind. but she's a child. And so. I don't think it was fair to throw her in a well. Yeah, it's a little excessive, but. That was a little much. Yeah. It was uncalled for. You could have returned her to the orphanage just like they did with the Weeble heads. Okay. Yeah. That's. You didn't have to throw her in a well. No one threw them in a well <laughs> that I know of. Well, <sighs> anyway. they ate everyone who tried. Probably. Uh, I don't think they'd fit. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Mara dies, right? Yeah. And she starts projecting all these images from her life and her death and her suffering onto a videotape um, okay. that then is cursed for everyone. You, we all know the story, right? Yes. Okay. So she does this by a power called Nensha, N-E-N-S-H-A. Nensha is a Japanese term, which is the ability to burn images from your mind onto surfaces, such as photographic film through psychic means. Interesting. Um, very interesting. Ninja is also known as photography. Photography or psychic photography came out to the scene in the late 1800s, which I feel dumb because I did not even think about the fact that there were cameras. cameras in the end, yeah, but like, I know there were, but I was wrong. like, yeah, I was like, that's not right. Okay. It's anyway. Too, too late. Too early. Right. Like really? y'all just got this tech, y'all just got this technology, and you're already you're telling doing me this? people can put their brains into it. Like, does it make it more or less likely that you're going to try that? I guess I don't know. I don't know. That's a whole other discussion about like, economics and stuff, but <laughs> like the cost of film, because like they only took pictures of people when they were dead. Like y'all had time yeah. to be doing this. Must be nice. Couldn't yeah, be me. Seriously, honestly. Right. So this is like the same time as the spiritualist movement. There was all this increased interest in fear photography and communicating with the dead. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, photography is completely separate from all of this because it doesn't involve any kind of woo-woo stuff. It's okay. hard science, hard science. I'm doing air quotes, everybody. Okay. Um, so a lot of people say that it's sim more similar to the science behind astral projecting or like the MK Ultra thought experiment kind of stuff. It's like woo-woo, right? But it's not yeah. ghosty woo-woo. So yeah. it's like a little different. I the first, um, yeah, you can see, like, right? It's kind of in that, sense, like, yeah. it just branches to the weird, yeah. So I'm just really still on the time period. It's really stressing me out, but okay. So in 1896, <laughs> we have the first, like, print mention of um, psychic photography. It was in a book called The New Photography, and the author described experiments where, quote, the image of objects on the retina of the human eye might so affect it that a photography could be produced by looking at a sensitive plate, which is just they somehow project their thought out their eye. Okay. He could have he just said that. Yeah. 
ink's expensive, sir. Like, don't have to make it all fancy. You don't have to. Like, who are you putting on airs for? Yeah, certainly not us. Like, I'm not impressed. Me so. either. Whatever. Anyways, the term photography was introduced in 1910 and it replaced the term psychic photography. Now, the dude who made up photography was a Japanese man named Tomokichi Fukurai. So I'm just going to do Tomokichi because it's like a lot for me to say that over and over. Um, He was a psychology professor in Japan. And he was really, really into parapsychology. Interesting. Like, this guy is so down. This is, yeah. like, I feel like if I did some kind of 23andMe lineage, like, back to my Japanese heritage. Yeah, like he's probably in there. That's, that we've got to be related. Yeah. So he started to do experiments with subjects. Hopefully it was all consensual, but, I mean, who knows in this time. Yeah. Um, so there was a woman named Ikuko Nagao, or Nagao, I think. And that is, Ikuko is my grandmother's name. So then I got more like, oh, we're definitely, yeah, right. Precious. So she could um, telepathically imprint images onto photo plates, which is pretty rad. But people were not here for that in that time period. And she was discredited by all journalists. And she literally died from the stress of this. Well. Not at the cool. very least, she wasn't burned at the stake. At the very least, right? That's and he also, up. like, this whole endeavor fucked him over because he had to resign from his position and never, like, did anything again with parapsychology. So Damn. all you people, like, discrediting people. Haters. Fuck. Like, no one's here for that. No. No one likes you. Because well, who am I, do- I talking about today? Not you, bitch. Died. Like, Hmm? So I think sometimes it's justified. What, discrediting people? Yeah. For sure. The one, I know, the I one example know. I have in mind is the dude um, who did that bogus study about vaccines causing autism. Mm-hmm. He deserves to be discredited. Yeah. Fuck him. But that caused harm. Like, who was being hurt by these pictures? No one. I don't know. That I know of. Mormons, I mean, probably. but yeah. Yeah, Mormons. All the Japanese Mormons. <laughs> okay so you know i can't i'm sure there are some i'm sure i'm yeah they got so that brings outreach. us all <laughs> they love <laughs> mormons love a good mission trip yes they really do <laughs> they do and you know they loved it in japan i'm sure yeah god don't don't get me started yeah. all of this is to bring us to today's motherfucker, okay. Ted Sirius. All right. Let me drink this before I say. Cool. Mm. Ted Sirius was an alcoholic. Nice. He was a late 40s white man who worked as a bellhop and then was fired, presumably because of the alcohol. Okay. But out of this terrible lost to the world of bell hopping Ted discovered <laughs> right like you know that it really crushed them as oh I'm group. sure the yeah. loss just mm. bell hops anonymous was like <laughs> a member of our own has fallen they had like a union meeting and they oh. were like fucking Ted's gone like they made I a shrine of him I bet oh I'm sure in fact I'm sure there's there's got to be a statue yeah. A mediocre white man, we gotta put that in bronze. Yeah. That's what we, we do. We need to savor that. We need to save it. That's that's our history. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. So anyways, Ted somehow discovers, I guess while he's unemployed, I don't know, drunk, etc. He discovers that he can transfer images from his mind onto Polaroid film. Okay. I don't know how he first did it. But his method is amazing. Okay. So he got shit face drunk. Then he rolled paper. Let me just do a little little demonstration. Okay. I had some pre rolled paper, but I left it upstairs and I hit the beetle with it. I had a prop, you know. It's okay. Anyways, he'd roll paper up like this. Okay. Like in a cylinder. And he'd 
put it up to the lens of the Polaroid. He called this his gizmo. Oh, and okay. <laughs> he, called, <laughs> he had some very choice um, terms. So this was his gizmo. The alcohol was his film juice. And oh. then depending, <laughs> depending <laughs> on how the photo came out, he, he called them whiteies and another term for another color that isn't great that would, would be in the same vein as that, that I'm just not going to repeat. Like not, as, not the cool. N word, but just like, we don't, we don't say it, Ted. We don't say it. So yeah. Okay. So he'd put the gizmo <laughs> up to the lens of the camera, put his forehead on the other end like this and literally just scream obscenities, like spitting, screaming a whole scene until a photograph was formed. So you know what's going to happen, Sarah? As yes. The next time you and I are in the same room, we're going to go live and we're going to try it. Oh, we're going to try it. And then we're going to take it on the road. Yes. We're going to, I'm just going to, because now that the Moth Boys event is officially announced, yep. we're going to have a photography contest at our Ooh, fucking booth. That's fine. I'm bringing a Polaroid. No one steal Everyone this. Everyone has to, no, if, you, if anyone steals this, just I'll fight you. ask yourself, okay, of the people who have, who have crossed me, where's, uh, where's Travis Walton right now? Do you know? <laughs> No, you don't know. Stop with Travis Walton. Where's Matt Damon or whatever <laughs> demon from the Bat Boy thing? No one knows. He's been missing for years. And finally, Dan Oren, whatever your name is, David Oren. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking steal our, our photography contest. Don't do it. Okay. We're, photography contest at our booth. We will provide the gizmos yes. <laughs> and some film juice. You provide the... The screaming. The photography. Yes. If, if this actually, like, worked, I will die. I'll be so excited. Yeah, I'd lose my shit. Oh, my God. I will lose my shit. Okay. <laughs> so, Ted did produce some actual, legit, interesting pictures. Okay. And I was going to screen share these, but the internet, you know. So, yeah. I'm going to post them on our Instagram. Cool. Um, most of the time, the pictures just came out totally black because you're blocking the lens. So, like, obviously, yeah. the light's getting through. Um. But there, you know, there were some cool ones. And because of those cool ones, he got super hyped up by this psychologist, Eisenbud, Heisenberg. It was one of these type of names that I always mix it up, but I think it was one of them. It was like a German-ish name, psychologist. So I'm saying this because one of the most interesting photos he produced was of her ranch. So he did his full screamy thing. Um, her and, ranch? Yes. Yeah, so she owned a ranch. She was probably a oh. bad bitch. Like in this fucking in the 60s like this owning your own ranch like that's yeah good for you i hands off to a person whose name i don't remember right now so he produces this picture of her ranch except the barn has been replaced by a totally different structure in the picture okay. and it's like kind of weird like how did you do that because you didn't have this technology even. i guess that's probably for the best though because that means he doesn't really know what your house looks like yeah, I wouldn't do not want him to know. Yeah. No. The one that's like freaks me out the most is he did one of his screamies. I'm calling them screamies instead the of screamies. photography, I guess. One his of the screamies. screamies. <laughs> he did a screamie. And he made a picture of this building that they were able to later identify as being this hangar that belonged to the air division of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. He's never been to Canada, right? which is interesting, but what's really weird and what makes me start to have an existential crisis that we are living in a hologram universe, none of this is real anyway, simulation, the word Canadian was misspelled in the picture, so it was spelled C-A-I-N-A-D-A-I-N. Canadian. Yeah. So both of okay. these things are like, have you ever seen i'm sure like on tiktok hey shout out for this fucking microphone um like the liminal spaces the oh bathroom. i am familiar with liminal spaces, okay because i uh, obviously so it's like my whole life is familiar. a liminal space buddy <laughs> bro <Same. laughs> i exist solely in liminal spaces yeah that's i worked, we, at a, that's I worked the night shift at a gas station <laughs> i'm familiar with liminal spaces <laughs> like okay but like think about like you know that dream logic Mm -hmm. it's familiar but it's not right 
Like yeah. something's fucking off and it's really It's like unsettling. the Mandela effect. Exactly. It's like yeah. the fucking Mandela effect. It's like not so, quite there. Almost. Not. It's just something's off. Mm-hmm. And I think that like a lot of his bullshit is probably not true. But those two pictures strike me just like how, how and why. Yeah. Like it's super fucking weird. <laughs> so the most commonly accepted theory about how he managed to do this hoax is pretty obvious, which is he had a smaller gizmo um, yeah. that was like thinner and had a tiny magnifying lens. And then on the other end was a piece of a slide of a photo, right? Yeah. So he shoves that in the bigger gizmo. He's screaming and everyone's probably distracted. Like that, yeah. that makes sense. I get it. Okay. Yeah. I will accept that because it's impossible really to fake a Polaroid. Like you can't really yeah, tamper with can't it really. even now. Yeah. Um, so that does explain like a lot of it, but it doesn't explain the misspellings and it doesn't explain replacing the structure of the barn. So that just really is why I was super interested in this phenomenon because there's something to it, but we just can't really figure out what. And sadly, Ted died. I mean, it's, I'm surprised he lived that long, but one of the cool things too is that the last photography screamy that he did before his death was just like a window with red curtain. Interesting. So I'm like, were you seeing into the other side? Like, was that the weird liminal space that you went to? Like, I don't know. I don't know. You don't think so? Maybe did, how'd he die? Did he get murdered? Or did he just die? No, no, he like just died probably person. from some kind of alcohol related. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Maybe I mean, it was like a, maybe it was like his childhood home. Oh my God, that's so sad. Yeah. Maybe it was. Because liminal spaces are like the back door, like, or back room theory is, is like, I feel like the, the most common ways it's described is like empty department stores and like yes. weird parking lots and like yep. shit like that and not just like a singular window. You know what I mean? Unless very, there was more true. to the picture and it just didn't quite, he didn't scream enough. Not enough screaming. I, he didn't scream enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing about this man. Ted Sirius, probably psychic abilities, but he didn't scream enough. Not nearly enough screaming. That's it. That's Happens it. That's to the our best of us, man. Take. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> it does. I mean, I don't scream enough. I think I would be, like, probably doing better if I did. I scream probably so, too much. Maybe we need to, like, balance that out. Yeah, I scream like, in my car got, a lot. Yeah. Oh, no, I scream in my car every single day. 100% of the day. On the way home, yeah, I have, like, a good enough. scream. It's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so... The red curtains, like, so I think the idea of the police, mounted police, whatever hangar, certainly strikes me as a liminal space. Yeah. That That type of, like, an empty airport type of shit. Yeah. That is very liminal space vibes. But. What do you think about the ranch? The ranch honestly feels like he, like, attempted to be like, oh, I know where you live, but fucked up because he doesn't. Ooh, like he was trying to, like, spook her like freak her out yeah or he was trying to just you know like be impressive and be like look i figured out like what your house looks like but he was wrong or alternatively i mean how many ranches like were there in the 60s Mm, that's true it's like another interesting thing with his pictures was that he did a thing where he would be in communication with someone else across the world across the country that had a polaroid and he would tell them exactly when to take a picture. I don't and there that. were some pictures that came up of like different countries. Like I think there was one that was in like Germany. And then sometimes he would do it. And the one thing that they could never explain whether he was doing it or doing that method was that some of the pictures came out completely white. So like it was total like exposure. Rather, like the that completely sounds like maybe just like the sense. flash took it and like, you but, know But like what I mean? the lens was covered. Like the lens is covered, so I don't know. Like I don't know enough about how polar. I think works, if you that one was like if you had it so that the lens was like just enough, like the the gizmo was not ju- like fully over the lens, but just enough light came yeah. through, it would reflect off the paper and it would just be white. 
very possible. Yeah. Oh my gosh, losing my shit. So my, like, I think we got to talk. How, like, how much time do we have to do? Let me we have twelve space. minutes. Five, twelve minutes. Okay. So I'm just gonna say my hot take on Ted Serious. One, he didn't scream enough. Yes. Two, I think he had a genuine power, and he yeah. had no idea how to control it and couldn't reproduce it the way that he needed to. Yeah, so, I think that's fair. Right. Like, so I'm like, maybe he faked these pictures so that he didn't have to go back to bell hopping or so he could continue to buy booze or whatever yeah. he wanted. Like, I don't think that it was a total hoax because it's so freaking bizarre that this person yeah. would even know about this. I wonder, I'll have to, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, at some point talk to Sid, who's like very well versed in old school photography and oh, like yeah. get their take on it because I don't know, like we, you know, we've dissected spirit photography, you know, mm-hmm. completely. And mm-hmm. as far as like weird old photography trends, this I think is one of the only ones left that hasn't been dissected. So like mm-hmm. maybe we can like talk to some photo friends and be like, hey, what the I would up like with this? that. So I think for our Moth Boys, what is the actual event called? Cryptid Bash. My- Cryptid Bash Photography Contest. Yes. We're going to have a prize. Yes. I don't know what it is yet, but we're going to have one. Whether you actually produce one or can manage to trick us, like if you can fake one and like fake yeah. us out, you also win. The prize is a forehead kiss. Oh, forehead kiss. Because that's wholesome. That's wholesome. I mean, we could, uh, we'll, we should design a special t-shirt that only you can get from winning this contest. We'll do like can a Can we have it three. say thought-tography? Like thought? Like thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the bottom it says, please more screamies. <laughs> please more screamies. Okay, someone... We need a design of somebody twerking on a Polaroid. Yes. With or pole dancing on the gizmo. I'm not going to be picky. Alternative, or, like, you know the possum that screams. <gasps> Just saying. Yes, I do. I can't not a lot of <laughs> options here. I'm we need somebody put these all together for us, please. The, the possum that screams thing, where it was like the summer eleven, and then it said he scream at own ass. Yeah. I. <laughs> I can't handle it's the funniest thing I've ever seen it's very funny it's it's legitimately funnier than every comedian has ever been and nothing will ever top Damn. it for me like I'm not kidding He's I cannot on ass. I can't think about it <laughs> please oh my please God. bring the screaming possum into it for us it, please okay screaming possum needs to be <laughs> he does Ted Serious should have screamed at own ass. Yeah, I he feel like he might have been more successful. Maybe that's the key to unlocking it. Maybe that's the key to controlling photography you is you have to, to scream, scream at your own, own ass. ass. <laughs> you need to bend over. I'm gonna call it like if we want to start taking bets on this, like it's a fucking horse race. Who do you think of of the people we know who will be at that event? Who do you think's gonna win? Whether it's by trickery or genuine skill. Uh ooh. I don't know. Really? Who do I think is most likely to... Okay. (laughs) I have no fucking idea. Okay, I have 20 American dollars that Moth Boy Matt fucking wins this. (laughs) That's a fair assessment, I think. Like... I'm gonna I'm gonna go around like I'm gonna I don't even wanna bet against really... you because I think you're right. <laughs> I know, like I cannot imagine anyone or, else being able to do it. Or if there was someone who was gonna be able to trick us, I bet you it would be Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. He Jeff would absolutely be able to trick us. He has a background in graphic design, he could figure it out. Oh shit, yeah. He'll make like a gizmo we would never even think of. Yep. Oh man. Yeah, like I feel like those two are my top contenders. Yeah. Which is why we'll have, like, three shirts. I think you and I need to, uh like, we need to have it be, like, a, like, a face-off. And have one of those, like, racket, bracket boards that, like, has, like, the different tiers. I was just thinking about that. Oh, my (laughs) fucking God. Yes, yes. And, like, you have to, like, get to the very end. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you have to face off. Oh, I'm so excited. This is ridiculous. Let's just think, like, what do you, (laughs) what do you think Moth Boy Matt's? 
photography picture would be the screaming possum oh my i will he own pass ass out. or scream he it <laughs> From 11, he eat on ass. <laughs> you made it sound so beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a talented singer. So I think now the show oh, in my mind has, I'm, <laughs> in my mind, it has become a grease theme <laughs> with the fucking boss of eating his own ass. We need to put him in a leather jacket. He needs a coat. Yeah, like, yeah, he's Danny Zicko, and he's in a leather jacket yeah. eating his own ass. <laughs> I feel like and on the Olivia on the back, John. there needs to be, like, a pink lady. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the Olivia Newton-John was going to just be crying and upset. Like I am right could. now. <laughs> So, okay, wait, one more thing before we go, because I know we have mm. to go on. We have to go on club out. I have another competition. We're going to have, a, you know what? I just got an idea. It's okay. the Cryptid Olympics. Oh, my Cryptid God. is the Cryptid Olympics. We're going to have photography. And number two, throwback to last week, there's going to be a horse girl running competition. No, I hate that. Yes, yes, I yes. Hate yes. That. I need to see it. I have to see it. <laughs> Everyone trying to do Ayla the Horse Girl because I've done it and it is very creepy and unsettling because my hair is like all so <laughs> two contests, two contests. It's going to be a double whammy. I don't even want to venture to guess who's going to win that. I think it's going to be someone we would never, ever never suspect. expect. Yeah, never. It's right. going to be some crazy shit. So, yeah. everyone, thank you for listening this week. Please. Yep. DM us about Cryptid Bash if you're not already seeing it on Instagram. It's in August in Morgantown, West Virginia. We will be having the first ever Cryptid Olympics. <laughs> Eating own ass will not be a, um, an event. Though if That's you can awesome. do it, we'll be impressed. If you can do it, I'll be impressed, but like it's not required. Okay? No, not a requirement. And if anyone wants to design us a flame that we will keep on our table and pass around, we would also be very great. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for putting up with this. Um, probably not great sound quality because my attic is haunted. Okay. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>